Because I don't think my heart can take the stress right now. And he keeps poking her shirt potatoes. When I tell you that I have filmed this at least six times, it's not an exaggeration. I don't know how to intro this video at all. I'm struggling y'all, but we're gonna nail it this time. Today, it's time to start another reading vlog. And this time we're doing it collaboration style. Cheyenne from That Tall Book Girl said, you know what we need in our lives is more recommendations. Let's get together a bunch of different people that read slightly different genres and get some recommendations on a trope that we're curious about exploring more of. The people that will be participating are Cheyenne from That Tall Book Girl. She's the one that put this all together. McKay from Oh Hey It's McKay. Sam from Sam Reads a Little. Nikki from Nikki and Bookland. Jess from Honest Fiction. Cynthia from Kindle After Dark. And myself, Baron, the Book Baron. Welcome to everyone who might be jumping over from the other gals. So I'm going to insert a clip here that makes us look very professional. Jess from Honest Fiction put it together from a kind of a catastrophe of a Zoom call where we all confused one another and couldn't figure out what the heck we were doing. But we did get names. She, she was able to put together a clip that lets you know who's participating, who's providing recommendations, what the tropes were, and then, you know, peruse on over to, to find out what, what books were recommended. Jess gets MVP status for the collab just for putting that together because truly I don't know how she did it. As you can see from that clip, the people that I am giving recommendations to are Sam from Sam Reads a Little. She asked for dark romance and I think specifically she asked for something that had dub con or non con. She asked for something along those lines, I believe. The other person I provided a recommendation for was Cheyenne. She asked for something with a love triangle. Now, it turns out we have read a lot of the same love triangle books and loved the same ones. So it was a little bit of a struggle for us to find a book. It's not the most loved love triangle of love triangles, but it's there. So hopefully those two are enjoying those books. Go over to their channels to find out what I recommended and if they liked it. And don't forget to go and check out everybody who is participating in this collab. All of the videos are out today, so you can just binge them all. But for recommendations for me, Jess from Honest Fiction originally asked for fantasy and she said, girl, you're going to have to be a lot more specific than that. And I said, fine, can you give me something urban or paranormal? So we ended up landing on insane snared, which is more of like alien sci-fi. That will be my first read. I'm already 10% into that. So I'll let you know a little bit more about that in a second. The other person that I got a recommendation from was Nikki from Nikki and Bookland. And I asked for step sibling. That is one of my favorite taboo tropes. And she said, for the fans by Nyla K. And then proceeded to say, well, we, we can pick something else because that one's really, really long, but I am determined. It's a priority read for me this year anyway. So I was like, this is kind of perfect because when else was I gonna dedicate the time to read this chunky, chunky boy? I did pick up the audio to ensure that we get this book done in time because I think it's like 700 or 800 pages. Did I just make that up? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. But we're going to be starting with Ensnared. And I'm 10% into this. And so far, I'm having a good time with it. So the premise is that our hero is like a spider boy. You can see him on the cover here. Actually, I think one of you all was reading this on Sprints. I'm reading it finally. Aren't you proud of me? Our alien boy, he kind of lives, it seems like off on his own, out in the jungle. He likes to be pretty solitary. He doesn't want a mate. But you know what? Fate doesn't really give a crap about that because fate never does. When the queen really declares her intention to find a mate and specifically she's had a lot of interest in him because he defies her quite frequently. She's like, you are the best suited. And he's like, ooh, see, that's gonna be a no for me and goes back out into the jungle and is like, thank God I don't like being in the city. This queen is kind of ruthless in her rule. She's not a very fair leader, it sounds like. He ends up going back out into the jungle and coming across another being, another type of being. I haven't quite gotten to the part where they've met yet, but I have read through the setup of him kind of having
time he encountered the queen and she is she's real mean i don't i don't like her also they keep talking about something called slits and i am really scared to look that up because i don't know what they're talking like are they talking about where like the silk comes out on a spider i'm scared to look it up i'm trying to get flagged by the fbi i guess i'll just have to wonder so i think i finally nailed that intro i'm gonna keep this one we're doing great all right i will get you what is this <laughs> No, no hands. I am going to get a little bit farther in, let you know what I'm thinking. I'll pick up the camera if anything wild happens. We know it probably will with a sci-fi book like this. So I will see you in a bit. So um, I've just been sitting on my living room floor reading. I've been doing a hair mask, hence all my hair has disappeared. So we're gonna pretend I don't exist from the forehead up for the moment. I am, I'm having a fun time with this. <laughs> I was just giggling to myself because our hero and heroine have now met at this point. And um, <laughs> they're having a little bit of like Tarzan and Jane moment right? They can't communicate. They don't really get the anatomy of the other person. The author is having way too much fun with that. Way too much fun figuring out how to describe like weird things like eyebrows. Like what would a spider find weird about the human body? One of the things the hero can't really get over is like how soft and squishy she generally appears. And he keeps poking her shirt potatoes. Like not in a like sexy way, but in more of a like what are those type of way, which is just making me giggle like every single time. Clearly I have the humor of a 14 year old boy. Other than that, it's just kind of entertaining like watching them interact because like obviously they have different mouth parts. So communication is kind of challenging. They speak different languages. This author really thought a lot of these things out and I'm having a really fun time with it. I was thinking about it. I think this is only my second ish like ever alien style romance because I think the only other one that I've really read and I've read quite a bit in the series is Ice Planet Barbarians. This is making me think I <laughs> Maybe you need to just read more of those. I'm gonna go continue reading and have a small identity crisis about that. <laughs> I will update you when something of note occurs. See you soon. Ooh, you're witnessing my de-evolution. So I'm <laughs> just reading before bed and I washed my hair. I recently discovered I have curly hair or wavy hair. I don't know the difference. I, I don't know how to style it. So just pretend you don't see it. I think that's best for everyone, frankly. I was just <laughs> laughing so hard. Um, I'm so entertained by this book. It's moving really kind of slow, but everything for them is so interesting and kind of a fun way to do world building because like nobody knows what's going on. But also it is interesting in her anatomy it's continuing they just had a scene where they needed to wash up he got real up close and personal on her her shirt potatoes and her her whispering eye got a got a full description of that also from the scene i was able to discern that the slit is not where the web comes out so i'm not on an fbi watch list well, I might be for other reasons, but I'm not on an FBI watch list for Googling that. And I figured out that it houses other parts, those types of parts. Know what I'm saying? Good. Also, he keeps commenting that she has a scent and he first noted it when he first found her. And at this point, she would have been unwashed for some time. And now that he just got up close and personal with her, her whispering eye, um... We know where it's coming from. So I can't tell if she's just real stanky or much like Sarah J Mass's men, he can just smell that sort of thing. I don't know. That's a weird thing to ponder. Why am I putting this on the internet? You know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is for your entertainment. I'm going to remove myself from this situation now because I really am looking witchy. I will update you tomorrow probably when I've read a bit more. I'll talk to you soon. Good night. Hi, so it's the next morning. We've got Kevin joining us over here, my handsome, handsome man. But I did want to give you an update because I'm now about 60% into Ensnared. I would say now we've, we're finally starting to get some more backstory of Liv and also just getting more communication because they're able to better understand each other because they've done a lot of work to understand each other up until this point. Like I keep saying, it's a really fun way to have been doing the world building because they're both discovering things and figuring things out together. You get both of their perspectives on different things. So it is a fun way to have that done. One thing that's kind of been missing though is we haven't had a lot of Liv's backstory till this point, which I don't think is necessarily that important in terms of like her life back on earth, but oh, we're just flopping so hard. He's laying on my foot, which isn't that important. All right, it might be helpful if I filled you in on a tiny little detail that I sort of forgot to mention, because this section's gonna make a whole lot more sense now. Ivy, not Liv, I keep calling her Liv, I'm sorry. She crash landed on this planet and she was with some fellow humans. Okay, now back to what I was saying. But I did find it a bit 
odd that she wasn't like concerned or interested in her fellow man really up until so far in like because they've been they fell into like a routine they fell into a pattern of getting to know each other it sort of oh, some of that kind of got passed over we're starting to get a little bit more of that now but I was like when it came up I was like oh yeah shouldn't have this come up earlier so just a little like, quirk with the storytelling and then the other thing that I'm noticing is that two of the main mechanisms that we're using to like drive the couple together like one they've kind of been doing some exploration trying to figure out what's going on with the other person and so there's been a lot of like accidental bumping and rubbing you know what I mean on both their parts then we're also getting their history of like I guess dating or with the opposite sex and both of them have had a crap time of it with their own species so I think that's what we're kind of using to drive them together which it, when I get the stories I'm like I don't care about these but also I'm like without them I almost feel like we need that in order to further cement why they'd like each other over like someone of their own species other than like girl live doesn't have any other humans to be bumping and grinding with one thing I'll say is that for whatever reason spider boy is able to pick up the language so we are getting more actual conversation now so I think this this is probably where the relationships are really going to start to build. We've got the foundational layers. So it's starting kind of far in, but I don't mind it because they've spent a lot of time together. We've done a lot of the groundwork where I'm ready. I'm like, I'm ready. Let's do this. Let's get our spider romancing on. That's where I'm at. I'm still having a good time. A couple quirks with the storytelling that I want to flag, but other than that, like this is, this is feeling like a really solid read. I'll probably update you later today, but if not, I might see you tomorrow. I'm going to go get cleaning and I will see you soon. Hi. So it's the next day and I finally just finished in snared. I wanted to give you some of my thoughts. I just finished it, so I might mull this over a little bit more and have additional things I want to say later. But right now, I feel like this is a really good first book in a series where we have the full lay of the land. We know all the moving parts now. The romance has really blossomed in that last 40%. So I feel like it's pretty, I don't want to say that it's necessarily like a plot heavy book, but it feels pretty balanced with thought and the romance and the fact that this is over three books. Hopefully that makes sense. I would definitely continue on with this series. I am really fascinated by the plot side of things. I want to know what's going on with the crash that I think I've been calling her uh, Liv. Ivy is the main character. So sorry if I botched that earlier, but it's, it's Ivy. I don't know why I mix those up but we get more about the crash that Ivy was in and kind of get a little bit more going with that. We've got some more to explore though. There's a lot going on with the queen and the dynamics of the bricks or spider people um, and their, their kingdom. I don't, what do you call a herd? I was going to call them a herd of spiders. Is it a coven? I don't, I don't want to ponder that too much, but you know what I'm saying. The, the group of spiders that he's part of and kind of what's going on with Queen and her leadership and the disquiet that's being experienced in their society. Well, that's just lots of interesting things to explore there. One thing that's been that was kind of fun throughout the book was that the spider boy language was on page. So they constructed a, a language. I, I like picking that kind of stuff apart. I find like language really fascinating. But the one thing I'll say, if you speak any amount of Polish, and I don't know, I can't remember which other Slavic languages this is true for too, but the word no is tak and that tripped me up because tak in Polish is is yes so my brain was having a hard time with that one but that's just sort of like a weird thing that I'm like I'm just interested in languages so so maybe no one else cares about that maybe that's just a me thing I'm ready to now move on like I said I might have more thoughts but I'm feeling like that was a solid four star I enjoyed it every time I was reading was just as interested in the plot as I was the romance which I feel like is always a good sign so I am now going to be moving on to For the Fans by Nyla Kay a another new to me author. So that's exciting. I've been a little bit intimidated by her backlist just because she's sort of the queen of MM taboo books. Um, some are way more taboo than others. Uh, they all tend to be very long. So it's just been kind of intimidating to figure out where to start. But when I talk about this book, everyone talks about how much they love it. When I tell people I'm going to read it, they're like, you're going to have such a good time. So I'm really excited to dive into it. So what I know going in, it's a taboo stepbrother opposites attract. Kieran is like the football star. He's kind of like the classic all-American boy but he's like a little bit moody broody type likes things a certain way he's a little bit meticulous and his stepbrother Avi A-V-I whenever I say that it sounds so weird but hopefully that's correct he's like more of like an artist hippie kid and so they kind of just stay out of each other's way because they just don't really get along they're not like brotherly love there well, at least I hope there wouldn't because there's going to be other kinds of love but it sounds like Kieran kind of ends up in a sticky situation and Avi ends up helping him out to kind of like resolve the issues and involves Cam work. I 
always find this topic generally interesting. I like books that explore this because it's like existed in our culture for years and years and years, and yet it's still taboo and there's a lot of risk involved. So like, why, why would a person get into that? I don't know. It's a fun thing to explore. I'm really excited to get into that. I will get some reading done and then let you know a little bit more about the book when I have a better lay of the land. See you soon. Well, do we all want to have a little laugh at my expense? Don't remember how in that little intro clip, I was like, Avi, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Can confirm, I was pronouncing it correctly. Full name is Aviel, so I was getting that right. The one I didn't get right is the one I felt way more confident about. I called him Kieran. His name is Kyron. All right, we've got a critter joining us. He doesn't have attachment issues. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but anyway, the only flag that I have on the play currently is that I got an intro to both the boys, a little bit of their personality, kind of where they're at in life. And one of the boys mentioned that they're 15. So I'm hoping that there's a time jump in here because we're getting them right as like the parents are introducing them and announcing that they've been in a relationship and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking there's got to be a time jump. What do you think? He agrees. I'm going to go work out and listen to more of this audiobook and see how much I can get through because it's a 22 hour audiobook. But I just read a Sarah J Mass recently. I'm in my, my big book era. I shall talk to you all soon. Hi. So we're getting another beautiful evening shot for you. I'm just folded up like a little pretzel on my couch. I've devolved into evening time. The de-evolution of Baron, a memoir. I wanted to give you a quick update because I'm like now 20% in and this is going out so easy. Like I had to remind myself that I needed to update before I went to bed, but I can feel that things are going to kind of kick off at this point. So I want to like give you a lay of the land, give you my feelings at the moment. So we did get a time jump, which I was very appreciative of. Basically what the author did was like, here's all the highlights before they met when they met, some key defining like fights or moments that show the building tension and animosity that Kyron has for Avi. Avi's a little bit more blah, but obviously like Kyron keeps trying to fight him, so he's gonna fight back. Avi is just like this sweet golden retriever, goofy artist kid. I just love his quirky personality. He's just so like blasé and like nothing phases him and he's just starting to get the inkling that like maybe he's not as straight as he thought he was but he's casual about it he's kind of like huh it's never something i really thought about but also like i guess we'll see where this goes Kyron is this like very uptight he's doing everything to please his parents because his parents have kind of like shaped him to be that way and so avi coming in and being plus a and just like still being loved by everybody he's just like i don't get it i don't get it i don't understand why you're just like doing all the things i'm not supposed to and yet somehow getting praise for it like this is so messed up and how frustrated he is sir come over here then oh we have a bushy tail man hi did you lose track of me for five seconds yes he did the things i deal with speaking of only fans we're gonna try this again <laughs> with much worse lighting okay so uh what i was saying with kieran is short-term memory loss alert yeah still Kyron. always been Kyron. never kieran don't know why i said kieran still Kyron. just corrected myself in the last clip and somehow still don't remember it he's a lot more like uptight and he's just like he's damaged boy we can tell we've been getting some hints that he's got some things that he is wrestling with internally it seems like we're probably gonna have like a mental health theme with him and then also religion's been mentioned a couple of times and it seems like something happened with that the tension at its is at its ultimate peak right now so i'm gonna go read like maybe one more chapter maybe just one more before bed i will update you tomorrow once i'm a little bit further in and i'll let you know how i'm doing at the halfway point and so look kevin because inevitably he's always there all right sleep no i have done this in a couple vlogs now i'm gonna go to bed now i'll talk to y'all soon bye all right good morning oh and the beast is here so he will be joining us but i want to give you an update i have been picking up the camera because i, I think pretty much all of them would have been like oh my god the tension is so much so I, I figured i'd just do like a single update because oh my god the tension um <laughs> it's so thick they they are full into their cam work era right now it's funny because they're having like such good chemistry and such a, a good time they're enjoying themselves while they're interacting for the camera they're having little moments of like oh yeah we should be filming this so there's a little bit more going on we can tell we can tell we know we're smart people but it's not bringing the tension because they don't know how to interact with each other outside those times like they can interact that way and things often escalate to interacting that way, but they cannot figure out how to just like sit on a couch together. They can't figure out how to be stepbrothers. That's just adding to the tension more and more. We're also getting more and more little glimpses and like little like 
whispers that the mental health issues and religion that I mentioned previously, that that is going to come back and bite Kyren because we're getting more of the moments of them kind of like giving in and maybe being more accepting. Now, uh, Avi is way, way, way more accepting than Kyren is. I think just because of their, their upbringings, right? Kyren is still trying to walk this narrow path that is kind of not allowing him to just admit his feelings because he's like, for so many reasons, I, sh I shouldn't like this. Now that they're starting to come to terms, we are getting like little tiny moments. One of them almost made me cry because Kyron, it was like a little, like a hand brush and then like a full hand grab. They were just kind of like laying there basking in it. Almost teared up. Like leave it to a spicy book to make me cry, but like an actual sad book. I'm like stone cold Steve Austin over here. No feelings, never heard of her. What the heck? What's going on? But yeah, we're starting to see Kyron be a little bit more accepting of the circumstances finally. And that has been very satisfying. He's still very much at war in his mind though. So it's gonna, it's gonna take probably half half the book more probably I would I would suspect now for two random things that I thought were entertaining and then one that made my brain glitch one there is a person in the dorms has a secret cat why why is there always someone in college that has a secret cat in the dorms every year this happened at my college every year you would hear who had the cat in their dorm like someone always did why is that the most college thing that I've ever heard and just having that little detail in there made me giggle so hard for one but also I was just like yeah that is what college is like two this is a question for you all they were talking about drinking or having a little, little party scene. The author called drinking straight from a bottle of alcohol a shot. Now, I don't call that a shot. I call that a pull. I've lived in a lot of places though, so I don't know where that lingo comes from. But what do you all call that? I'm, I really, like, I really want to know. Like, do you guys call it a shot? Am I, have I been saying it weird? Do you have a different term? I have so many questions. Comment below. And then finally, I'm still workshopping this title. I, I'm not going to commit to this, but I'm calling it Random Things That Bother Baron's Brain. Because even in books that I love oh so much, there's always some detail that my brain's just like, what if we just got stuck on this. And the one for this book seems to be that I don't think anyone that was involved in the development or the author herself lifts weights. Ooh, pause. So critical detail about myself that might inform why I'm being a complete and utter brat about this little minor detail. I have been bodybuilding since I was around 12, on and off. I'm now in my 30s, so I have a lot of experience with weightlifting under my belt. Okay, hopefully this informs why I'm being such a stinker about this stupid detail. It doesn't even matter. I'm just, I'm being whiny. Here's my evidence. We're putting them on trial. I don't know. The first inkling that I had, Kyron was in the weight room. He was talking about lifting heavy. Okay, if you're a weightlifter, you know. Lifting heavy means you are doing lower reps, and if you can eke out like one or two more reps, you're on fire that day. This man did 30 reps. 30 reps? That means you had at least 20 extra that you cranked out, so you aren't lifting heavy. So that was my first one. But then I was like, you know what? Kyron is a football player, and some football players don't know how to lift weights. Maybe. Maybe that's what's going on. I don't know. So I, I let it slide. The second piece of evidence that I have, there was a comment made about how someone else does not stare at themselves while they're lifting weights in the mirror, that they're not that obsessed with themselves. Second flag on the play here. You look at yourself in the mirror to check your form so you don't blow your back out. That's my evidence. Random details that bother Baron's brain has now concluded. <laughs> Feel free to drop other titles below because that one is not good. Okay, I'm gonna get back to reading. I will update you hopefully later today, but if not, definitely tomorrow. So I will see you all soon. Can someone explain to me how this book has me going from swooning to almost cheering up because we're starting to have some real conversations. We're starting to get some real cutesy gestures. We've got some real hot spicy times. I mean, those have been throughout. They're still fun. And then now it has me so stressed because it was like, hey, you got a little glimpse of like how good it could be. <laughs> what if it all went to sh Rude. Rude. I was having a great time. Why'd you have to ruin it for me? I'm stressed like I am when I read a historical fiction book about world war. This shouldn't be happening to me right now. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> this is so unfair. I'm gonna go finish this book because, because I don't think my heart can take the stress right now. It's a lot. <laughs> I am having a good time like I'm enjoying the book, but I'm like not having a good time. Like my internal status, I need to, I need to go work out. <laughs> I'm just getting so stressed and flustered right now with everything. That has no context, but if you know, you know, I guess. All right, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go finish this. I need to finish this. I'm unwell. Hi, so it's the next day 
and I have finished For the Fans. I tell you what, got a little bit of a book hangover. I sat with my morning coffee without a book in utter silence, just cataloging things from this book. You in no universe can convince me that these two are not soulmates. Like point blank, period. The way that they always showed up for each other, even when in the heat of the moment, they might've like lashed out a little bit. It was never so severe that I felt like, ooh, that's irredeemable because they were both able to kind of just prioritize that person so much. They were willing to make sacrifices in the moment, even if it hurt them, knowing that that's what that person needed at that time. And then that person would turn around and make a sacrifice for them. The way that they had all these little actions that showed that they were prioritizing this person, that they were listening to this person, just like it brought a smile to my face. Like I teared up so much in the last like quarter of this book because what the author kept doing was introducing a little bit of pain, something that would test the relationship. And when you've got it so tentative, you have it so tentative, you have two people that don't wanna admit that they like each other. In the first place, they start admitting it and then have something happen. It really forged their relationship because it forced them to come together over and over again. And each time something happened in the third act, it hurt a little bit more and a little bit more and it was a little bit more serious. And so it was pain, soothe, pain, soothe, pain, soothe. But then you just got these really beautiful, sweet moments, like really prove how much much they really cared about the other person in those hard moments. Oh my God, there was so many, so many sweet moments that I was just like giggling over and just like, oh, just absolutely swooning. A couple things that I really loved was I felt like the religious theming was handled really well. It's very, very light. It was just like a, a really lovely recontextualization. It was just handled really, really nicely. I really like how that all kind of like end up playing out. Because that's such a tricky line to walk, I feel like. I also like with the side characters that a lot of them had like little layers. They had little emotions that would kind of pop up that would make you go like, oh, there's something more going on with that person. It, it was So it was nice because it didn't feel like anyone was like all villainous or all nice. Like there was friends that got annoying. There was villainous people that ended up showing up and they were given the chance. So it just felt like there was a lot of layers to all these, these side characters. And they weren't just there to like support the story, but they were like real people that had entered this couple's life. One of the main like things that I was really taking away from this whole book was just like, give people the opportunity to show up in your life. Like don't stuff this stuff down, don't hide it. Tell them what you're thinking. And then they have the opportunity to show up or not. Sometimes people surprise you, sometimes they don't. And then you know, you don't have to, you don't have to sit there and wonder. I thought that was like a really nice message to kind of like wrap everything up. I think the only thing, if I was to get like super, super nitpicky with this book, there was some repetition that got a little bit annoying. Oh, he's my stepbrother. I can't believe I'm falling for my stepbrother. I can't believe I did that with my stepbrother. And then it's for the fans, for the fans. Oh, we should do it for the fans, for the fans, right? And, and so those two lines got chucked around quite a bit. Like on some level, you don't want to lose sight of those things because they are kind of like core to the book. But at the same time, I was like, I don't need it repeated this many times to like remember that that's what's going on. But also that's like so, so minor. So, 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 so minor. Like it's not even that big of a deal. One thing though that I did get to thinking about just because Kyron with his position as star football player, he's definitely going to be on the spotlight. I kept thinking about what sort of salacious headlines would be in the news regarding their relationship. Because you know the media would have a field day with the fact that they were stepbrothers, that they had an OnlyFans account. There's other stuff too. Oh, they could just totally twist that and make it sound so salacious. And then you like see this like cutesy romance, not put too much stock in the media because I know that they would, they would paint this couple in such a crap light. And I was just like, no, protect them at all costs. That's it. That's it for this vlog. I had such a good, good time reading both of these books. I'm so excited that I have a new series that I'm really enjoying. I have a new all time fave potentially. I just had such a fun time. But don't forget to go and watch all the other videos that are associated that are part of this collab. See what other people recommended. See how everyone else did. Did they enjoy their books? And if you want to chat about anything with these two books, I would love to hear from you. I know a lot of you have already read these books because I got so many messages <laughs> about how excited y'all were that I was reading these books finally. If you're going to talk about anything spoilery, make sure just to flag that and hit enter a few times so we don't spoil the magic for the other folks that are watching. But with all of that, don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I really, really hope that I see you on my next video. Bye-bye.